So back in 2023, I recreated the 2023 MKBHD intro, but they just put out a new video and they actually redid the intro, so I'm going to be trying to recreate it. So first, let's look at the intro. You can see how the intro is a little bit different, but you can see that this intro still has the basic fundamentals of the old 2023 intro. It's still got the same shapes, it's still got the same cube, and this is the same animation. And then there's this weird transition, and you can see they added lots of post-processing effects like film grain and the glow. And you can see there's just an overlay of SMPTE color bar. And today, I'm going to be recreating the entire intro from scratch, and uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. I'm going to be doing this part in DaVinci Resolve. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to ensure that my frame rate is 30 and I'm going to drag down the video that I downloaded and I'm going to put a marker between all the parts. So this is part one. You can see this is when part two starts. So I'm going to add a marker. You can see this is where all the SMPTE color bars show up. So I'm going to place another marker here and then you can see this is where the background transition is. And then this is when the SMPTE color bars disappear. So I've placed the markers when the events are and uh, now I'm going to recreate it from scratch. So now you can see these markers actually correspond and I've made the background and the fusion composition as long as they need to be so now I can delete this and start working so I'm in the fusion composition and let's start working now this background actually used to be dark but now it's a very light background so I think the background color is actually switched between the second and the first part so first thing I'm gonna do is obviously recreate the background so that includes this grid like pattern so I'm gonna pick screen color and I'm just gonna select this and this is a slightly off-white color and you can see if you look really closely this grid right here is actually not gray it's a slightly reddish grid. I'm going to go to effects, open effects, grid. I'm going to set the major line width to zero, the line color to the reddish color of the cube, just like that. And then I'm just going to make the line width super thin. So maybe 0 0.015. So now you may notice that this is just a normal grid. This is actually rotated. I'm going to make another background node, make it transparent, and I'm going to go to image, uncheck auto resolution, and then make this 1920. I can just plug the background right into the grid and you can see the reason why this grid node actually looks like this is because this isn't square anymore so I'm gonna need to make it square by making the row and column solves the same amount so 20 and 20 so just like this so then I'm gonna add a transform node connect that to the transform node and then I can actually view the node just by dragging it up to viewer and I'm just gonna flip the angle to 45 degrees just like that and I'm also gonna zoom it in so now I can actually add a resize modifier so I can drag this down here and then I can connect the transform to here and the resize modifier is going to convert all of this which is in one by one aspect ratio back to the 16 by 9 aspect ratio so now if i convert that to there and if i show media out now you can see that this whole thing has been converted back to the uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio it now looks like the grid in here and now the background is pretty dark so i'm actually gonna make the alpha on here zero. Oh, that's weird and now it looks almost exactly like the original. And now, this is the most painstaking part. I'm going to be trying to make the cube animation. So, basically what I need to do here is, this is basically made up of eight lines. I know that because I recreated it last year. And I need to draw those eight lines individually and then animate them so that it starts off as the cube shape and then ends off in the MKBHD shape. And it's easier said than done. And it was actually the most painstaking part of the video. So let's do it. Okay, now that I've painstakingly redrawn the individual lines, I'm just gonna try and animate the position and the length of all of these lines so that they match the original intro. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the spline of the animation. So now look at all that stuff right there. I'm gonna select all these polygon nodes. Just like that, just, just make it ramp up super fast like this. I'm also gonna enable motion blur, all that juicy stuff. Now I'm gonna add the transform node. And if you watch the original video, you can actually tell that the animation starts off up here, but then it slowly goes down. So I can move the center right here from here and then go to frame 70 and then move this down to the middle. Try to increase the size of the background and then decrease the size of this transform here just so that it matches up again and with this animation as well i can just do this make it start fast and then end slow just like this so now in between this transform and the media out i'm gonna add a new background node and i'm gonna use the color picker to pick the background hit ok and then I'm going to remake the MKBHD logo based off of the grid-like pattern. So this is the logo right here. It's basically just two parallelograms stuck to top of each other. This background node is going to be the shape. So you can see, I'm just going to pick the screen color. I'm going to disconnect this and I'm going to add a polygon node. So now I can actually draw out this right here. And now this is the shape that I've drawn out. And I'm just going to connect this back to the merge. And I'm also going to turn up the border width to about 0 0.6. I did 0 0.4 last year, but it didn't really look good. And now I'm going to duplicate 
duplicate this, and then I'm going to invert the X rotation by 180 degrees. I'm going to move this down, turn the merge node in the background back up. And the reason why this looks like crap is because you got to change a couple settings in these polygon nodes. So first, to fix the rounded corners, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to both of these polygon nodes, and I'm going to zoom in here just so you can see better. I'm going to change the border style to the third one, which is called miter. So now I have a sharp corner, and I'm going to do the same with this one. The reason why I turned up the border width is so that unchecking solid actually does this to it. I gotta move this out a little bit more. Add a transform node. Now I added the transform node because I was going to make the logo zoom out just like last year's intro. But I thought that it didn't zoom out. This part used to zoom out, but now it doesn't anymore. But then later I realized that it did. Oh wait, so what I'm... Ah, uh, so correction, it actually does shrink. So I actually end up doing the zoom out later in the video. So I'm going to disconnect this and then move this away like this and then I'm going to add background node and make it transparent and then I'm going to add a merge node and then make this whole thing the background and then make this the foreground and the reason why I'm separating this whole thing is so that I can actually animate the, the visibility of this because this part is actually visible throughout the entire thing. So at frame 69 I'm going to keyframe this and then set the blend to 0 and then at frame 70 I'm going to hit the keyframe button again and then set the blend to 1 just like that. So I'm going to add this transform node and then after frame 70 i'm just gonna shrink this a little bit so at frame 90 i might have shrunk this about maybe 0.5 see now that looks very good so now let's recreate this cube so you can see here that this cube is pretty different so you can see that this cube actually has a little bit of bloom to it and the only render engine that actually supports bloom is Eevee. I'm also going to go down here to film and then click transparent just so I can make sure that if I render this out, the PNG sequence will be transparent. Later in the video, I actually realized that turning on bloom while having film transparent on actually didn't work. So I had to remake the bloom in After Effects later. So let's go ahead and deal with the elephant in the room. That will be this cube right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate this cube. I'm going to rotate this by about 45 degrees and then I'm going to rotate this. Oh wait, what? Now I'm just going to recreate the animation. So first I'm going to match the size. This, the size is about right. The size changes about this much. So I'm just going to hit G and then start moving the position to where the cube is. And then I'm going to hit G again and move that down there. Now it's like this. I'm just going to go absolutely crazy on the rotation. I'm going to go to the graph editor and I'm going to expand this real quick. And now I'm going to match the cube motions. Now the motion of the cube actually already looks pretty good. So I'm going to go back to the timeline, shrink this down and see the cube. And look at the motion of that cube. It actually doesn't look too bad. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to recreate the different uh, sides of the cube. This cube is actually very, very different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a texture for each side. And that texture is going to be an emissive texture, which can activate the bloom in the render engine. So let's do it. So I'm going to hit the plus button right here, hit new. I'm going to select this face and then hold shift down and then select this face. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit assign. So now this emissive texture has been assigned to here. And if I increase the strength, you can see that the bloom also also increases and I'm just gonna make this red and I'm gonna add another texture it's like new emission surface I'm gonna select these two different sides right here and I'm gonna change this to green and then I'm gonna hit assign so now you can see we have an RGB cube how cool is that oh shit. and I'm going to change the color of these textures over time at frame 9 I'm gonna add a keyframe here and then at frame 10 I add another keyframe and I'm gonna change the color to maybe yellow and also yeah make sure this is checked So I'm going to make sure that the file format is PNG, make sure it's set to RGBA, and then select the destination of the files, MKBG Intro Recreation Cube, and hit accept. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump into After Effects, import the PNG sequence, and I spent quite a long time trying to recreate the glow of the cube. Now in the original intro, I think they added like some sort of additive glow. And I tried for so long to recreate the glow of the cube, I couldn't really get it exactly, but I got pretty close. I think I should uh, maybe re-render it using like beveled edges, but then how's the textures gonna work? Actually, let's find out right now. Oh, that's not bad actually. Look at that, slightly rounded out cube. Alright, now let's do the rest of the shapes. First, I'm gonna recreate this other cube right here. 
So you can see, I can just very easily recreate that cube, and then I can just move this like this. Go to the modifiers tab, wireframe modifier, and I'm just gonna make the thickness a bit more. Set this to an emission texture, and then I'm just gonna do the same with the other shapes. Yeah, this cylinder is pretty hard. I'm gonna render it real quick, make sure of transparentness is turned on and then hit render animation. Now that the render is done, I can go back into After Effects, import file, and then select all of them. And then I'm gonna select PNG sequence, import, and then I'm just gonna put this PNG sequence underneath the cube. So now this animation is actually pretty close to being completed. All I need to do is add a couple of effects and then I'll be done. So in the original intro, you may have noticed that there's, there's a lot of noise. So you can see this is perfectly clean. So above this one, I'm gonna add an adjustment layer, add this glow effect. You can see how it does look pretty nice. Oh, whoa, what the heck? So now what I'm gonna add is another adjustment layer above everything, and then I'm gonna add a noise effect. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to recreate the sort of transition from this to this. And in the original thing, they actually used some weird SMPTB color bars or whatever. And that looks awfully like one of these generators right here, which is the SMPTE color bar. There it is. Okay, I think I'm done. So this took incredibly long, and yeah, here's the finished video. So which one did you like better? The one that I did in 2023? Or the one that I did just now? Comment down below. So yeah, I really really hope you enjoyed this video. If you loved it, please subscribe, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Bye!